In this episode of Idea City... By the year 2050, people would not only be having sex with robots, people would be falling in love with them, in some cases, even marrying them. It's part of a new kind of technological elaboration that rests on a very dehumanizing practice. So we're going to stage a debate. We're going to talk about a future where there may be such thing as love robots. And for the affirmative, we have David Levy, who has come here now on a second occasion to argue for the proposition that sex with robots, possibly love with robots, possibly marriage with robots, is a plausible future for mankind. Thank you, Moses. The last time I was here, Moses invited me to come and talk about my recently published book, Love and Sex with Robots. The talk, like the book, was crafted to explain why I was totally convinced that by the year 2050, people would not only be having sex with robots, people would be falling in love with them, and in some cases, even marrying them. And there are some people, like the next speaker, Kathleen Richardson, who dispute the morality of having sex with robots. For her campaign, she wrote a position paper with many arguments based on things I said in my book, Love and Sex with Robots. In particular, she takes me to task over some of the things I say in my chapter on prostitution, and she disagrees with me when I say that robots, sex robots will reduce prostitution. To me, it seems self-evident. If someone's having sex with a robot, they're not having sex with a prostitute. So uh, I, I see no reason why sex robots can't uh, obviously be said to reduce prostitution. And Kathleen takes me to task a bit and says that I use prostitution as my model for human-robot sexual relationships. It's not my model. What I do is show that many of the reasons that people use the services of prostitutes are the same as reasons why people will use the services of sex robots. The most common reason why people use the services of prostitutes is variety. They like having a variety in their sexual partners. They like having variety in the sexual experiences they can enjoy with those partners. And people who buy sex robots or hire sex robots will be able to enjoy a wide variety. They can have tall robots, short robots, fat robots, thin robots, whatever variety they want, and also whatever experience, sexual experiences they want, because robots will be deliver, able to deliver all of them. And also, the people who use the services of prostitutes know that they're having sex with someone who has no care for them, someone who doesn't love them, someone who doesn't have any empathy for them, someone who's, who is only interested in how big is their wallet. And that will be the same with people having sex with robots. And I see no reason why people shouldn't enjoy sex with robots just as much as they do with prostitutes. And as artificial intelligence is developed further, robots will develop more human-like personalities and more, more human-like characteristics. And when that happens, the robots will actually appear to have empathy for the humans, and so that will make the relationship, the sexual relationship, more like a human-human sexual relationship. If you think about the number of sexual encounters that take place in the world every single day, many of those are sexual encounters where there is no empathy between the partners, but the partners don't feel a lack of enjoyment because of the lack of empathy. Richardson writes that sex with robots is neither ethical nor is it safe. But sexual mores and the ethics of sex have changed hugely in the last 100 or 50 years. Sexual practices that were illegal or considered immoral 50 years ago are now almost de rigueur in the bedroom these days. 
So my conclusion is that Kathleen misunderstands and misinterprets much of what I've written. And finally, haven't we already reached the point when consenting adults can do with other consenting adults whatever they like in the bedroom? And if they can, why not do it with consenting robots as well? Thank you. It's really about politics. Politics is about power. Who has power and who doesn't have power? Great ideas are meant to be shared. Join the discussion on Facebook. For the negative, here we have Dr. Kathleen Richardson. Thank you. Hello, everyone. It's great to be here at Idea City. My name is Kathleen Richardson, and I'm the director of the Campaign Against Sex Robots. If you want to understand what we're trying to do at the campaign, you have to understand how important we think empathy is and how we're against slavery. So the campaign is for empathy and anti-slavery. Now, before we go any further, I don't want you to think that when I'm talking about these things, I'm talking about the dolls, the inanimate objects getting harmed. Inanimate objects can't be harmed. People can. What I'm talking about is the way that we dehumanize people in our society, and we treat them as objects. We treat them as sex objects, and that contributes to their dehumanization. Empathy is about taking into account what another person is thinking and feeling and responding appropriately to him. If we didn't have empathy, we wouldn't actually be able to relate to each other as anything but objects. So do sex robots contribute to developing empathy or interrupt it? I want to say here today that it interrupts the development of our empathy. It's part of a new kind of technological elaboration that rests on a very dehumanizing practice where people are treated as sex objects. Now, some people who develop sex robots will say, you know, sex robots are going to reduce prostitution and they're going to end child rape because now you can have these artificial entities that people can take out their frustrations on. In Japan today, they are selling child sex dolls. These child sex dolls resemble five-year-old girls and they're sold to adults as sex dolls. And you know the arguments on this company's website are promoted by people like Levy and others, who basically have no understanding how inequality, gender, economic inequality works, and how harmful producing these objects and putting them into the world is for children. Representations that we have of children come from the minds of adults, and child sex dolls come from the mind of adults who are sexually aroused by children and infants. But the second thing, and this is really important, is we need to stop thinking about the sex trade, and that means prostitution and pornography, and then all the tech, sex, sex tech that's coming out of it, as an inevitable response to some innate biological phenomena. Because that's the argument. There's an innate biological phenomena, and this is just an, you know, a consequence of it. I want people to stop thinking about it as innate and start thinking about child abuse and prostitution in ways that it really is. It's really about politics. Politics is about power. Who has power and who doesn't have power? And who can exert power over others? Technology can't solve the problems of child sex abuse and prostitution. Now, thank you. Now, <clears throat> So there's another idea. There's an idea about, about man and his loneliness, that there are some men out there in the world and they can't make relationships. And I want you to know that my empathy and the campaign's empathy extends to these men who have difficulties making relationships. And what we'd like to do <coughs> is develop a different kind of narrative so these men's real suffering, their real human suffering, is taken seriously. And what they're being given, what they're being told, 
is their real human suffering can be addressed by dolls. So, just to bring everything to a conclusion, what is the campaign against sex robot all about? Well, we're against the idea that you can objectify women and children, that you can substitute them with objects, and it's more or less the same. It's more or less the same. There's no impact, there's no harmful impact on the world. We're also a campaign that supports men and boys. We don't believe men and boys are sex objects either. We believe that these narratives about men as sexually voracious, who can't control themselves, who commit rape, they're all part of that narrative, that worldview that objectifies men. So if we want to create a new kind of culture, we have to start making sure that our society and the technologies we produce in our society are based on deep, empathetic understanding. And, you know, we all need each other, and no one should be left behind. Thank you. You're promoting a replication of a child for, that, are, that has come out of an adult imagination about having sex with a child. That's where it's come from. I'm promoting That's the, the use of robots, of hopefully to wean paedophiles off children, and if not that, then at least to give paedophiles an alternative to human children. Get the latest Idea City news instantly. Follow us on Twitter. So on the face of it, when you plot out the words and say we're going to have a debate about sex robots, it, it, it starts as a bit of a gag, but what's underpinning all of this is a sense that the robot revolution is real, it's coming, and it's unavoidable. So how far away is this revolution, and what can or should we do about it? If you would sit down, Kathleen. You made a point that I have read David making, which is there are vast numbers of people who are terrible at relationships, have no interest in developing relationships, or have serious societal deficiencies which prevent them from generating relationships, and it's not just men. So David says, why shouldn't these people find some form of companionship? What do you say to that? Well, I think we live in a society where we, we, we think it's possible to live without human relationship. You actually need other human beings because without human beings, you're not confronted as a real person. And what we need to do is address the isolation politically. We need to develop a political response to it, not a technological response. The technological response will just keep reinforcing the isolation, keep creating that distance, and unfortunately, cre keep creating that objectification. I don't disagree with a lot of what Kathleen said, um, but I think there are some very important points where we differ. I didn't actually find her answer at all satisfactory. It doesn't answer the question how um, can we provide uh, satisfactory sexual relationships um, for people who don't have the ability themselves to uh, find their own sexual partners. There is no political way to do that. Such people either have no sex at all or they have to have sex with um, a robot or, or maybe with a prostitute. Um, as far as um, the use of, of sex robots, maybe by paedophiles and so on, this is something which will have to be explored. My feeling is that research psychiatrists will find ways of using sex robots to um, parts, in some cases, to wean paedophiles off their um, predilections, and in other cases, to provide them with an outlet other than children. So I can see a lot of good coming from it. I can, obviously, I can also see the possible disadvantages. I don't think it's clear-cut that um, having child sex robots is definitely a bad thing for society. Hmm. I can just see somebody taking a few words out of that sentence and making your life really unpleasant. Yeah, well, I, I, I can understand that, Moses, but which would you rather have, a paedophile having sex with a child robot or a paedophile having sex with a child? 
I think this totally misunderstands everything about paedophilia and child abuse. It's about someone abusing their position and authority in society. When, when adult men choose children, they select them. They don't just sleep, you know, they don't just go for any children, they go for the most vulnerable ch child they can find. And do you know why they do that? Because they're using their political interests. They're using their political well, power to Kathleen, get their needs met. David's not advocating child well, he is, in a way, by promoting Nonsense. child sex robots. Nonsense. He is. He is. He is. Promoting their use for good purposes. You're, you're promoting a replication of a child for, that, a, that has come out of an adult imagination, right? An adult imagination about having sex with a child. That's where it's come no, from. I'm promoting the, the use of, of robots to, to, to we, uh, hopefully to wean paedophiles off children. And if not that, then at least to give paedophiles an alternative to human children, and it's the same argument that you made, which I disagree with, about um, the reduction of prostitution. Obviously, if a man is having sex at six o'clock in the evening with a robot, he's not having sex at six o'clock in the evening with a prostitute. Therefore, it's evident, surely, that the advent of sex robots in large numbers are going to reduce prostitution. Equally, I think it's obvious that people, that paedophiles having sex with a child robot are not having sex with a real child. I don't understand your political argument. There are millions of people out there in the world who are lonely. Sex robots will fill a huge void in their lives and make them much happier. None of what you've just said there makes any sense to anybody <laughs> who knows anything about a relationship. Get the latest Idealist news, presenter information, and watch streaming video at ideacityonline.com. I want to put this proposition to you, Kathleen. You, you establish the pair bond as the ideal, of course. A good relationship with another person that's warm and that's affirmative. Um, but you know, there are some people who say that the you get is not worth the you get. That human relationships lead to enormous complications, devastation all around massive volume of divorce in current society and so on. So maybe it's a rational judgment that somebody will make that it's too damn complicated. What do you think of that? I think, fortunately, the desire to be with other people is part of our species. So as children, we need a carer to look after us. Attachment is very important. We need to make sure that we cultivate societies in which attachment between adults and children is, is nurtured and supported. Because the better attachment experience a child can get, as they grow into an adult, the better their attachment experience they can have as an adult. So I want to put our energy and resources into those kind of things, you know, developing those kind of relationships between people. And we can do it. And this kind of outlook, it comes from a very dark, dehumanized place. This outlook would, would spell the end of humanity, because people would be, be a, unable to connect with each other, to form relationships. Oh, goodness knows what would happen as a consequence if your world vision develops. David, do you have a final reply to Kathleen? Um, I think that there are millions of people out there in the world who are lonely, who are miserable, they have no one to love, no one who loves them, no one to have sex with unless they pay. I think for these people, sex robots will fill a huge void in their lives and make them much happier. And I think giving more happiness to mankind must be a good thing. None of what, are you, none of what you've just said there makes any sense to anybody. <laughs> who knows anything about a relationship. Paying a person to have sex with you and treating them like an object, right, is not a relationship. It's, you might as well just, you know, 
I mean, it's a terrible misuse of power over other human beings, and to endorse it in the way that you have is, is very distressing. I have a feeling that this uh, subject will come increasingly to the fore because there are some serious efforts out there to create exactly this kind of creature. So, to be continued. Thank you, Kathleen. Thank, Thank you, you Davis. Thank you very much, Moses. Idea City is a place where ideas come face to face. To inspire and give us hope. At this time, our planet needs it. Most idea city is a place. Everybody sing. Where ideas come face to face. To inspire and give us hope. At this time, our planet needs it. Most idea city is a place where ideas come face to face to inspire and give us hope. At this time, our planet needs it. Most idea city is a place. Everybody sing. Where ideas come face to face To inspire and give us hope At this time our planet needs it Most ideas city